Hello, my name's Roisin, and this may be the least prepared I have been for a vlog ever. So, hang on, I think this is a bit... There we go. Ah, uh, that's much better. Hello friends, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, this video, is going to be a vlog um, that I seem to be a little all over the place at the moment. It is Thursday evening and I just got back from work. Um, I was going to do Dewey's 24 hour readathon, which is on Saturday. Um, and I did it last year, I had a really good time. It was my first ever 24 hour readathon, so I thought I would try and do it again. However, I then realized that I'm working this Saturday and then we decided to have some friends come to our garden on Saturday as well. Saturday is not the best day for me for having a reading vlog, 24 hour reading, because obviously I can't read when I'm at work. So, um, Instead, I decided to do this weekend vlog, except it's going to be a Thursday, Friday, Saturday kind of a weekend vlog, um, because tomorrow I'm off work, but then I'm back at work on Saturday, um, so most of my reading is going to be done tomorrow. But I thought I would start this evening talk to you about what I'm reading. I'm currently in the middle of three books, because this is the most unorganised vlog ever. One second. Currently, I am partway through three books. The first one is... How to Love a Jamaican by Alexia Arthurs. This is a collection of short stories about Jamaicans and the Jamaican diaspora. Just over a third of the way through this. Um, so far, I am liking it but not loving it. It's all right. I think there's been one story, can't quite remember, one story I enjoyed more than the others, but the others have just been okay. I think that I've had trouble reading them back to back because a lot of them feel like they're really similar. Um, and so I kind of forget which one I'm reading and what's actually happened in each story. Um, and also the writing of these is not my personal preference. It's very like plain and straightforward. And there's not a lot of beauty in it, um, but we've still got several short stories to go. So I will read them and see what I think. <laughs> then I'm also <coughs> finally reading Till by Daniel Kellerman, a book that I have had out from the library for over a year. Um, it's not overdue because of the pandemic. They have been, um, uh, like extended how long you could have it for and then it in increased the amount of renewals you could do so it's not actually overdue. I'm about this far through so again about a quarter of the way through. Uh, so far I'm really enjoying this one. Uh, this is historical fiction set in Germany during the Thirty Years War about Till who is a ca character from German folklore but like transplanted forward in his time though obviously historically for us. Um, this was on the shortlist for the International Man Booker last year um, and I am, yeah, I'm really loving the writing. I love it so far. This was translated from the German by Ross Benjamin. Um, and I think he's done an excellent job. I'm loving like the folklore vibes. It's kind of really quite dark and creepy. Um, and I'm enjoying that. And then I am also on NetGalley listening to an audiobook of Segu by Maurice Condé. Um, and this is a classic published in, well, a modern classic published in 1984, but historical fiction again. Uh, Maurice Condé is a French author um, from the French Caribbean. I can't remember what the name of the island is. I will put it on the screen there. <laughs> the year is 1797. The kingdom of Segu is flourishing, fed by, fed by the wealth of its noblemen and their power, the power of its warriors. The people of Segu, the Bambara, are guided by the they're griots and priests. Their lives are ruled by the elements. And basically it's about the four sons of this one guy who all go off in different directions. Um, one becomes a Muslim, one becomes a merchant trader, one becomes uh, enslaved, and then there is another one. I don't know what's gonna happen to him yet. He's just still at home. Maybe that's what happens to him. Um, so I am 30% of the way through this one. It is reminding me of Things Fall Apart by Chinua Achebe. Um, because it's set, I guess, at a similar time, but also because it's written in quite a similar style of being like very pared back. Like there's no real description and there is no real judgment. Um, we know what all of the characters feel about their situation, but there is no real like, there's no judgment of what they are doing, even when they do terrible things, which is again, not my favorite style of writing, but I'm enjoying the story and the learning about it. So um, we'll see uh, how we go on throughout this rest of this weekend. So I'm going to film Thursday, Friday, and maybe a bit of Saturday too. But um, also what came in the post today is America is not the heart by Elaine Castillo. Um, Hannah from Let's Talk About Books Baby was like really pushing this book on Instagram. She loves, she loves it. And it was for sale at um, Blackwell's, which I've got this really cool bookmark with it too. I'm reading those three books. This book just arrived and we'll see if I finish these, if I move on to something else, but I'm going to go now and make dinner. 
So I've made dinner. Um, I made a chilli. It was all right. <laughs> Sometimes I make really good chilies. Today was not one of them. I don't know what I was missing, but it was just okay. Uh, and then I tried to film a video, but as you may be able to tell from the lighting in this clip, it is getting a little too dark for that. If I'd have filmed it before, <laughs> as soon as I got home from work rather than after dinner, we would have been fine. But it is not quite late enough in the year yet to be filming after dinner videos. Um, for now, I'm going to do some reading on here for my um, video essay. This video essay was supposed to go up tomorrow, but I haven't finished the reading for it yet. So it's definitely not going up tomorrow because I still need to write the actual essay. Um, I feel like a back in uni, leaving everything to the last minute, except that the deadline's on my own. So um, it's going to be an essay about Shakespeare. So if you are interested in Shakespeare, should be the video after this one um, that should be about that. But I, yeah, need to get on JSTOR and start reading some essays so that I have some sources to cite for my argument. God. Hello. Better. We are going to my shed. <laughs> there we are. Shed. So my shed is where I keep my medication. Um, there is probably personal information on this somewhere, so I'm not going to show you it. Um, but I have to take medication. Uh, I inject myself every other week. Um, so I thought since today is medication day, I would take you on my journey. I will make sure that there will be sign postings for where to skip to if you have a needle phobia. But uh, and I won't show you anything like graphic, I promise. But uh, this has to be out in the open for 40 minutes before I can do anything. So I had to warm it up. So yeah, I don't think I did a very good job of explaining <laughs> what's going on there. But um, my medication has to be kept refrigerated. Um, and because my partner has a severe needle phobia, we keep it outside so that it's not just in the regular fridge where he's looking for his lunch. Um, so yeah, this is my, this is it. Um... So it's much more like an EpiPen or an insulin pen than anything else. Like, I never see a needle. Well, I can peer into it, but it's um, not like other injections. It's just like a pushing it in situation. Um, but it has to be kept refrigerated. I get usually about three months supply at once. Um, so I have... If you're new here, I have psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis. I do have a video about it up there, but it is one of my earlier videos, so it might be a bit um, hard to watch. So I basically it's um, they are autoimmune conditions. Psoriasis attacks your skin. Psoriatic arthritis attacks the connective tissue in your joints. Um, and I personally think it does your digestive system because everyone who has it seems to have also digestive issues. But, you know. Regardless, take this, which is a TNF inhibitor, um, which is a type of immunosuppressant. So a TNF inhibitor inhibits your TNF, uh, which is a, I believe, don't quote me, I'm not looking this up. I believe that is like a protein that tells your immune system to go on the attack and it stops your TNF cells from doing that. Um, so part of my immune system doesn't work. The way my uh, rheumatologist described it was the drug I was on before, methotrexate. Um, like just, so you imagine your immune system is an orchestra. And methotrexate turns down the volume on the whole orchestra. Um, so they're still all playing, but at a much lower level. Whereas this, the TNF inhibitor, um, turns off the turns off the horns. So woodwind, percussion, um, the other thing you have in orchestra <laughs> are still playing, but the brass section has turned off. Um, basically, that's how he described it anyway. Um, so I will we'll do a bit of this later, but like I said, um, it needs about 40 minutes to warm up after I take it out of the fridge. Um, once the bubble starts moving, there is a bubble in here, which is not dangerous. It's fine. I'm injecting it into my fat, not into my veins, so it doesn't matter that there's a bubble. Um, once that starts moving, then we're ready to go. Hello. So it has now been half an hour, um, which is the right time I checked. Um, so we have the bubble. Um, focusing on my face, but... 
regardless that's the bowl so this is the whole thing um so i have to inject it into either my thighs or my stomach i find this like stabbing myself quite difficult so i tend to do my thigh um and i've been doing this for over a year and i'm still like get really anxious um not really anxious but like get nervous about it um i've had a few times where i've like gone in and then pulled it straight out and it's like sprayed everywhere um or one time it in it like released without being injected so it spread everywhere um <laughs> that's only happened like three of these i have wasted this year so i try i prefer to like press it and then just press it harder rather than try to stab like that because that always leads to me bouncing off um <laughs> weird hand gestures anyway so i'm gonna push this in and you won't see anything you will see my face um but you will hear a click and then it injects and then there's another click when it pulls out as it were um this will take me a few times always does so It does pinch it does hurt quite bad actually this time this one's really painful oh that was a painful one i don't know if when it's painful it's because it's gone into my muscle or what but that one was really bad not sure why but there you go and now i don't have to do it for another fortnight and i have to go put this in my shop's bin so that is the like big medication i guess that i take um and as i said i do that once a fortnight i have some other things that i take um i have a lot of over-the-counter medication in my bedside cabinet um but i also have some other um prescription stuff that i take every night and then that's it like i don't take a huge amount of medication um because i have such a strong reaction to a lot of medication like um proton like i've been through a load of different medications for various things and they ended up being worse than my actual conditions so um i think like i've just got a really sensitive stomach that reacts to everything so i have to be really careful with medication that i take that way um so obviously the injection doesn't cause that and the other stuff i'm on is like a lower dose stuff specifically because my stomach just can't handle anything um yeah so that's that i'm probably gonna have a bath and wash my hair now um and listen to my audiobook segu in the bath uh, and then we'll get out and we'll do some more reading i think i need to sort this out <laughs> okay so now it is time for me to shoot a quick video uh for today um because i am really unprepared at the moment i need to get ahead but i am very much behind um so i'm gonna shoot that video and then we will move on uh with our day i haven't actually done any reading it today and it is midday um so i would clearly be failing if this were an actual 24 hour readathon but it's not so i can read as much as i like um but first i yeah need to shoot this video so then i'll get back to you later hello so still not done any reading but we are going on an adventure now we are going to the garden center and then we are going to the supermarket super exciting <laughs>
this farm vending machine where you can get like eggs and honey and other stuff. So we're gonna get some eggs today. so we are in my office you are really high up um i haven't like worked out how to do filming in here yet um when you're on the desk you're like way too close to my face but um now i feel like you're like leering down at me a bit <laughs> it's like a myspace angle um and you can also see the stuff i haven't organized in here anyway i am going to start editing my video for today this is really really late to be doing this i am it's already four o'clock i didn't realize quite how long all of our like errands would take um so we've been gone for ages and also it's currently taking ages for anything to transfer from my phone to my laptop it takes like an hour so i'm gonna be doing that and i'm gonna actually read for the first time in this vlog whilst i do that um i would go and do gardening because we got loads of stuff from the garden center as you saw um but every time I leave my laptop alone to do this, it just is like, nah, and gives up. I don't even have to be like using my laptop. I just have to be here to keep an eye on it. So I'm going to read my book and sit in here and then I will start editing my video. so i have edited that video and it is up and ready to go live soon um so i've come out into the garden to repop some of the things we got today it is way colder than it was earlier earlier it was like 16 degrees and super sunny and now there is no sun in our garden and the wind is chilly but i'll take you on a tour of some of our vegetables um and then i'm gonna listen to my audiobook of segu whilst i do the repotting so in here we have our lettuces, we have Lolo Rosso, Custom Come Again lettuce and Little Gem and then, I don't know if you can see that, we've got some radishes that I planted from seed that have already started to come up because I only planted them two days ago. Then over here we have way more lettuce and then that is red cabbage. These are globe artichokes, or at least they will be. That is some spinach. Here we've got some leeks, we've got some in there and some over there. And then I accidentally left these out in the frost. So this is a tomato plant, but I don't think it's gonna survive. And we've got this tomato plant as well. And then we've got this cucumber, and these are all tomatoes. And then those are purple sprouting broccoli. Is a hedge. <laughs> Doesn't look like a hedge yet, but it will be a hedge. Um, it's kind of a mix of different fruiting, fruiting varieties. So we've got uh, plums, pears, uh, bramble, like a blackcurrant and hazel, I think, and maybe some damsons in there, all mixed together. These are flowering currants, so we should get some red currants off them. That's a rowan, so that's not going to be food. These ones are bird cherries, which you can't eat, but you can make booze out of them. And then also they're really good for like pollinators and birds. Um, love the bird cherries, obviously that's why they're called bird cherries. This is a rose, so <laughs> entirely unedible, but um, it was my present from my boyfriend's grandma. This, we're not sure what it is, but it is a fruit tree. These are all fruit trees. I think they might be blackthorns, so that would be sloes. This one over here, it's a raspberry. These are strawberry plants. So should have some strawberries on there later. And that one is black currant i think yeah we have blackberries in the bramble and then black currants but yeah these strawberries are looking really really strong so that's good and i've also got some seeds that i need to start planting out as well um oh actually we've got a tray here which looks a little dry so i will water it is hopefully gonna be brussels sprouts and then my boyfriend set me up this like potting station because i have arthritic spine so bending lifting all that's quite difficult um so Everything is at 
kind of sitting height so that I can sit and pot. Um, so I'm going to do some potting today of some of the stuff over there that's like in smaller pots and spread it out a bit. Um, and I might also repot the basil and the coriander that we bought today in the supermarket. We bought to eat them, but I might try repotting them and see if that makes it last a while longer so we can get some basil and coriander. Not basil, mint. It's mint and coriander. Um, yes, and then I'll probably wait till Sunday till I do any more seed planting because it's kind of late in the evening. I'm kind of cold. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to do too much but on Sunday I don't have so many like errands to do during the day so I can do more planting. Hello, so it is seven o'clock now which means it is cozy reading night um which there's not that much to do for a cozy reading night you just read cozily so i'm going to try and read for the next three hours because i feel like for a reading vlog i have barely done any reading in this vlog considering i was going to try and do 24 hours reading today i clearly really haven't done that there were too many uh errands that i had to do but i think that but in terms of my general reading, I tend to read more in the evenings anyway. So for the rest of this evening, I'm going to try and read as much as possible. And I'm also going to be making a key lime pie for tomorrow. So um, got some baking. To, so I'm going to do some baking with you as well. Um, key lime pie is actually, or it's not a proper key lime pie because I know I don't have key limes from the Florida Keys, but they are, but this recipe is really, really easy and really delicious. So I'm going to do that um for the people who are coming over to our garden tomorrow um <sighs> i'm really tired <laughs> which i think is my general experience but yeah i'll get back to you in a bit hello okay so i am now halfway through tell and the second part was so entirely different from the first part i still really enjoyed it but we've jumped forward like over the 30 years war so the first part was kind of before it and then the second part's after it and it's written in an entirely different way it's really interesting there's lots of like direct address um breaking of the fourth wall or whatever um and it's really concerned with stories and how stories are told which i guess makes sense because he's utilizing a character from uh folklore but it is really interesting um it's there's a lot to think about in this book so i'm looking forward to reading the second half um but right now i'm gonna go make a key lime pie so i'm gonna go back to listening to segu and i'll talk to you show you my pie as i make it key lime pie in the oven I managed to get a little in my hair that is water I rinsed it out but um yeah I managed to get a little bit in my hair which is great since I washed it today um regardless I'm also halfway through segu at the moment um I'm really enjoying it however it's interesting I think right it follows four sons of this family it's very male focused but it is really interesting the way that it's going through like what west africa and north africa were like in the late 18th early 19th century it's talking now about how the british have like banned slavery and are like stopping spanish people taking slaves and stuff um but really just because of trade one of the sons now is in brazil um as he was sold 
to a Portuguese trader. Um, one of them is back home but is trying to convert people to Islam and there's like a war coming with the Fulani and the Bambara because these family this family is Bambara it's interesting history um I feel like if people who like pachinko would like this um in terms of that like it's a really big family history I keep like takes me a minute it changes perspective without warning a lot which I don't mind but it takes me a minute to like remember who everyone is because they will get given different names uh, all the times so they have like four names and it's like wait wait which one was this again? So I have to remember. Um, but yeah, I'm still only halfway through. So there's loads left, loads more that can happen, which is kind of incredible because so much has happened already. I think this must be a really big book, like if you have it in physical copy. Um, for me, it's not my favourite. The style of writing isn't my favourite. Um, and the I prefer to be like engrossed in a few characters rather than having such a broad cast. Um, but I am enjoying the plot, I think it is, and I am enjoying the historical aspect of it. Um, I'd be intrigued to know how much Homegoing is indebted to this. Um, like, in terms of, I've not read Homegoing by Yajasi, but that also follows, like, the descendants, but it follows them right the way into modern day, I think, whereas this is really just focused on their lives. Um, but it's a similar historical period, um, following family in that way. That's why I'm wor wondering if there is any like relation between the two if if I'd read that maybe I'd be able to see more similarities but I've got to wait for my pie to come out and then then I can get ready for bed and like just get into bed and read she beautiful hello so I'm in bed now um it's just one of the finally got into my jammies I feel very good one of those days where it feels really essential to get into a bed um I'm sure it's been all day. Anyway, um, I wanted to come back to mention that um, something that I'd forgotten to mention before about Segu, um, is that it's kind of like, I don't know how to describe it, but like as if religion is a very important part of the book. Um, like there's bits about Catholicism and bits about Islam, but mostly it's the traditional religion the traditional religion of the Barbara people and it is the spirits and the um gods and everything that's traditional and part of that religion is real um like is part of the action of the book um they talk and they participate in the action and there are dreams and visions and stuff that are true um so that was yeah, another aspect of it that I didn't think I'd mentioned before. Probably won't speak to you again until the morning. But tomorrow I have to go to work. And then I'm um, MVP Lover. But hopefully I will read some more as well. Oh, we'll see. Hello. So it's Saturday now and I'm in the library. This is behind the scenes at the library. Okay, so people came in while I was talking to you, which is kind of embarrassing. Um, <laughs> just trying to make drama alone. It's Saturday, I'm at work, working, uh, but it's my lunch break now, so I'm going to go get some lunch. I'm going to read Till whilst I'm at lunch. Um, and then this afternoon will be barbecue times, so I'll show you some of that, and I'll talk to you this evening, after I've had a drink, probably, to be fair. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. So it's the evening now. Um, I think I filmed some clips of people at our barbecue, mostly of a dog because our friends brought their dog um, and I forgot that that was something I was intending to do. I've still been reading Till and I've been enjoying it. It keeps um, skipping around from different perspectives, which I wasn't expecting and I'm really enjoying. Like the Till character is kind of tangential. Um, so I'm interested to see how that all wraps up and comes together. I'm also still reading Segu and again, enjoying it. Very much more a plot focused book than I usually read, um, but I am enjoying it because it's very much a commentary on culture as well. I have a good drink, so sorry if I keep repeating myself. Um, but it is only like nine o'clock because Everyone has to be outside and it is cold now that the sun has gone away. Um, so I'm still going to read some more this evening. So maybe I'll talk to you about what I've actually been reading later on. Morning. 
it is Sunday now, um, after last night. I've read more of Till last night, like I said I would. I really am enjoying it so far. I think I'm going to finish it today. Um, but right now what I need to do is clean up after our garden party last night um, and <laughs> get myself sorted because I am... I'm not too bad, but uh, tired and croaky, obviously. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna clean up our kitchen. We managed to actually bring everything inside last night for once. So um, that's pretty good. I just need to clean up our kitchen and I'm gonna keep listening to Segu while I do that. Um, uh, and I will hopefully come back to you with a wrap up of all the books at the end of this. Otherwise I feel like it's gonna be like a really unsatisfying vlog if I don't actually finish anything I'm talking to you about um but I just kind of wanted this to be an off-the-cuff vlog anyway so I wasn't properly planned for it I suppose um you'll have to let me know in the comments what you think do you like this kind of vlog like I've watched vlogs by like Jen Campbell where she reads books but she doesn't finish them in the vlog and it's just kind of a vlog of her week rather than specifically these are the books I'm reading this is what I think of them all the way through um so maybe it works for something more off the cuff like this as opposed to my like challenges where I actually am supposed to be talking to you about the books let me know what you think in the comments because I'd love to hear from you so that I can make sure my content's the thing that you want to watch um yeah I'm gonna go clean not my favorite thing to do but... hello so um I tidied up the kitchen and now I look like a scrubber because I have decided to tidy everything like this this should not look like this so I am tidying um we took down we had built-in wardrobes here and we took them down um because they weren't the greatest and um this was underneath <laughs> this wallpaper was underneath so we need to take that down too uh but first I need to tidy so I have got myself into a tidying space um I've just been just found that I am spoony life drowning in cozy um I don't take this that often um I mean Obviously, opioids, addiction, etc. It's not that high strength codeine, but um, the main reason I don't take it that auction often is because the pills are massive. And um, oh, I've also just been replanting um, some plants. That's why I've got terrible nails. Um, oh, I feel frazzled. I'm all over the place. Anyway, yeah, the reason I don't take it that often is because the pills are massive, and I have um, a problem with my esophagus, and swallowing massive pills is a big problem. So um, <laughs> you've you've always got to tackle like so many problems when you've got a chronic illness you're like oh I need pain meds but now the pain meds cause me intense pain so um <laughs> I need to go back to them and ask for the soluble ones um but they have recently changed the nice guidelines about giving people pain medication so that makes me a bit wary about going back and asking for more pain meds when I've still got pain meds because I can't take my pain meds because they hurt um yeah anyway I'm just going to keep tidying up here and listening to Segu. I haven't had a chance to read any more of Till because I just got a like intense tidying bug and I really wanted to redo everything. This is m a muslin cloth. Um, like, why is that there? Who knows? But I've got to sort it out. <laughs> so I'm going to keep doing that. Hopefully I'll read some more Till. This is definitely not going up on Sunday because Sunday is today and it is five o'clock. So this is when it was supposed to go up, but I've decided to postpone it till tomorrow. Um, I've been a bit all over the place lately and I need to like get myself back in order um get everything get myself ahead with video filming and all that sort of stuff like I was before um but I haven't been at the moment I'm kind of flying by the seat of my pants so <laughs> that as this vlog is evidence of this is the most chaotic vlog I've ever filmed but here we go <laughs> my bedside medicine pouch Hello! So, um, you are currently propped up on my pop socket and a makeup brush, so if the angle is terrible, that is why. Um, so, it is Sunday evening, uh, night time, and I have just finished Till by Daniel Kalman, translated from the German by Ross Benjamin. And I really enjoyed this book, I had a really good time with it. Um, it's set during the Thirty Years' War in Europe, which I knew basically nothing about, which um, is really interesting considering like I'm from Europe um you'd think we'd know some more about European history but really I know nothing about it at all um but that didn't stop me from enjoying this book so if you too know nothing about um the 30 years war and 17th century European history you can still enjoy this book historical fiction with a kind of gothic slightly magical edge like there are definitely ghosts throughout here and spirits um 
like some of the it's full of it's about the Thirty Years War was a war between Protestants and Catholics in Europe um in the seventeenth century, but uh there is a lot of folklore. Till is a character from German folklore um that Kellerman has put as a real character in the Thirty Years' War. Um and there's a lot of ideas about witchcraft and folk beliefs and things that come out throughout this course of this book. It is also a book about storytelling as a character from folklore, a stock character in a story. There is a lot in here about storytelling and performance. One of the characters in this whom I loved so much was Elizabeth Stewart, um, daughter of James the First. Yeah, daughter of James the First. Um and who had been at his court and seen Shakespeare perform um, I think he performed Hamlet or something in she'd seen him in, and she talks about this and she talks about performance and playing until he is a uh, till he's a jester and a circus performer so there's a lot about performance and references to Shakespeare and other European um, literature from the time talking about how ridiculous it is to try and write poetry in German which I think considering this was originally written in German is probably funnier if you read German um, but still it tickled me so there's a lot of fun in here and there's a lot of plot but it's really non non-linear so uh it, it jumps around into lots of different sections from lots of different perspectives um and it tells you the same history from multiple different perspectives and shows you how personal biases and memory plays tricks on us and so what it's a historical fiction historical fiction is always kind of about history and how we tell history um and i think or at least good historical fiction is um and this definitely talks about that and um we see the winter king who reading the back i thought the winter king was going to be some sort of folkloric character but no he's literally frederick v who was king for one winter um and that's why they call him the winter king um but it not that he died he was deposed anyway it has made me really interested in reading about this history i feel like it's a book that i'm gonna have to sit with for a while because there's so much in it um and it's definitely one that can bear rereading um but I love, yeah, like I said, it's told non-linearly. So it tells you chunks of Till's life, but he's like an adult and then he's a child and then he's an adult again, but in a different time. So it always takes you a while to work out what period you're in and what's going on. And I think that's part of the the confusion because this book is kind of about how pointless and needless the war was and is and the confusion going on and nobody really understanding what they wanted. There was a lot of comedy that came from like courtly manners and um, the protocols of a royal court which i thought was really interesting and quite funny the way that it was described in here so yeah i really enjoyed this definitely um different than a lot of the historical fiction i've been reading recently um and i want to get more into this sort of thing rather than some of the more popular stuff i've been reading but um that is the end of this vlog for today uh, i hope you have enjoyed this um let me know what you think of this format because it's a bit different from some of the other stuff i've been doing like i've either been doing stuff where i'm doing a challenge so i'm talking to you about those books specifically and not really showing you what's going on in my day or just doing one day vlogs where i read one book throughout the course of one day um but this one i've read three different books but this is the only one that i've like finished the other bits have been sort of more vague and you'll hear about them in my wrap up um so i don't know how you feel about me not finishing a book but talking about it in a vlog um if that's really unsatisfying or if you don't mind that you don't know what i think of sega until i get to my wrap up um yeah this was kind of off the cuff like i said so hopefully it was enjoyable but i'd love to hear your comments in the comments because that's where you put comments um so thank you for watching um please remember to like this video if you did like it and to subscribe i put out new videos every wednesday friday and sunday sort of <laughs> since this one went up on a monday um but i aim to put out videos every wednesday friday and sunday and um i will be with you again very very soon that is definitely true so thank you for watching Bye bye